and, and the scariest for me, apart from all these remote control things, is the big push to have autonomous weapons. Now, that's weapons that can go completely on their own, decide who to kill, when to kill, and where to kill them. And they're talking about for complex missions where there is no radio, con no radio communication to them. So if somebody shoots at one of these things, damages it, it could go berserk and God knows what it could do. It could kill all sorts of people. Now, now I was really shocked today because I've been doing a lot of interviews over the last week and a lot of press because I gave a talk last week and it, it's created a lot of press. And during that time, I've been taking my eye off the ball because I try to read the press every day. And I've noticed that on the 27th of February, uh, BAE, that's British Aerospace Engineering Systems, have tested out a fleet of autonomous jets that communicate with each other and talk to each other about which target to acquire so that they don't acquire the same targets. Now, that is the scariest thing I've read in a long time. They've actually done it. I mean, I, you know, and it goes back to your comment of just, you know, I'm looking at it from where it's all going, you know, 10 years or 20 years from sure. now, and you're talking sure. about, That's you know, job. that it's already here. The, day, <laughs> the, 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 the capability for abuse and danger is already nightmarish. And I mean, that's, that's what seems to be so just, just mind boggling about this is that it's already here and it's already so dangerous. You know, you well, mentioned... You yeah, let me ask you something. I mean, what's going, what's going on? I've been reading reports about these small fixed wing uh, airplanes being tested over Houston. I mean, it's, it's in the world press as well. But it's kind of buried. T it tends to be very All this press seems to be in, in. I read defense procurement news, that kind of thing that isn't really, you know, everybody's cup of tea and it's hard to digest. But I keep seeing little reports about tests going on by the Houston police. What's that about? Well, I mean, you know, it's actually it's it's so classic. They go out literally two hours north of the city, and it's all of the police chiefs and the the mayor and every police department, police enforcement department in the city. They close it off on a private ranch. When the news helicopters get a tip and show up, the police helicopters illegally tell them to leave the area that it's restricted airspace. Mm. And I mean, this was totally done under the cover of darkness in, in every way, shape, and form to keep the general public aware, uh, unaware that it was actually being done. And what it was. The, police, the press just stumbled upon it by mistake. Well, they, no, they got a tip off from someone, you know, fortunately, who, un, who probably understood that this was not definitely a good thing for the city. And so they went out there, you know, thank God the press actually was, was doing its job on that day. And they went out there and they got the, they got the video footage of them testing one of these uh, unmanned aerial surveillance predator drones that they're using over in Iraq and Afghanistan. And I mean, and that's part of what bothers me so much is all of this technology, you know, it always starts off in the battlefields a couple thousand miles away, and then within a very short amount of time, an increasingly short amount of time, it's already being utilized by the police forces for domestic, domestic I mean, operations. It's much shorter than it used to be, though. Oh, of course. It's really coming back very quickly, isn't it? Well, I mean, and again, if you read the policy papers from the RAND Corporation or the Ministry of Defense, they're all saying that the next generation of warfare is going to be against the domestic populations. I mean, that's not me saying that. That's them saying that. That's them saying that that's the next... Uh, because as the worldwide situation continues to deteriorate, and again, this is their, this is their projections, there's going to be increasing re resistance against the power structures that right now are dominating the, the Western world. And as resistance continues to grow, the oppression... And the, the reaction by the elite and by the establishment is going to continue to grow. And that's why they're planning for that. They're instituting these systems now. There's a way to stop it, though. The way to stop it is to make it an election issue. That's how you stop it, isn't it? But can we? I mean, w I, that was one of my questions I wanted to issue, Exactly. Well, I wanted to ask you, what has been, you know, you've said this has generated a lot of press, but yes. it has... The pre are you seeing a payback? Are you seeing a reaction in the populations yet, or is it too soon to, to look for that? I'm getting a bit of reaction. I'm getting quite a lot of email and things. And, and also, there's a, there's a group called Landmine Action that got landmines banned throughout the world. And they've been in touch, and they're getting behind me and calling urgent meetings to try and get some sort of international discussion going about this. 
because it has to be international. I mean, no country's going to give it up now unless the rest do. Of you know, course. China are starting to do these. Russia are starting to do them. Singapore, Korea are really ahead now. I was quite pleased to see, actually, in all this press, there's a report in the Korean Times saying about the autonomous weapons coming along, and they're saying, apparently, we're the worst. And they didn't seem to know that they were the worst because the South Koreans haven't been telling their own press, but the world press know. And now the South Koreans know as well. So, so there's, there's, there's something happening. But it's how we keep it on the agenda is the, is the problem, isn't it? Well, I mean, what worries me is, is the world is increasingly becoming so complex with so many threats that it's just the continual excuse is, is that we have to have these things to be safe. And I, I know yeah. that I know that that's a complete fraud yeah. statement, but that's what's that's what's continually going to be used. No, you're exactly right. But the other problem is, you see, that you know, this is why I have to be careful as a robotics person because, you know, since since 1920s, since that Carl Kapek play, the Czechoslovakian play, went throughout the world because they they predicted a destruction of us by these super intelligent robots that were actually biochemical beings, but they were called robots for the first time. And so there's been so many scare stories about robot takeovers of, overs of the world and things that it's very difficult to get the press to listen because they just say, oh, it's another cranky story. So that's why I have to be really clear and say that, I, you know, I don't believe in, you know, I, I, it's not Terminator-style Skynet or anything because I'm trying to get this stopped before it gets anywhere. And so to get them to take me seriously, I have to talk really about plans that are going on at this moment in time. And people say to me, these people will say to me, oh, it's like that uh, SDI, you know, the Star Wars initiative. It was all made up. It was nonsense. It never happened. But this is happening, and it's happening every day in the war, in the, in the place, in the, in the battlefield. But, you know, the big thing is, I don't know if you know about the South Korean stuff. I mean, there's, there's these, um, they're, they're putting these robot guards into the demilitarized zone. Now, the demilitarized zone, the DMZ, they call it, it's a kind of no-man's land where if anybody steps into that at all, they're fair game. You can kill them. You can put mines there. You can have tanks going about, and you're allowed to shoot to kill no matter who gets in there. So what they're doing is they've commissioned Samsung, and I've seen the things. You can get them on the Internet, type in Samsung South Korea border guard, and you'll see these border guards, and you'll see what they look like. And they, they're just mounted. They're not mobile, but they swivel and turn, and they can see for miles, and they can shoot and kill from two and a half miles away. That's what the South Koreans are doing. Now, the South Koreans are also saying they want a fully robot police force within the next five to ten years. So, so they're starting it. And, and, you know, what the police want, they'd all love those things, wouldn't they? Well, uh, well of course. I mean, you know, I, I, there, is a, there is a good argument, at least to some degree, that that it could, um, you know, save lives. You know, the, the question is, is where, where do you start and where do you stop with, with arming them and with, you know... Oh, you've got, it, you've got it in one. I mean, it's the thing of, like, you know, it's, if you put robots into, into a battlefield situation, if you're a commander of soldiers, you're morally obligated to save the lives of your soldiers. It's not your job to look at the big picture. If there's weapons there that will save the lives of soldiers, you'll go for it. I read some of the blogs about, you know, the messages I'm putting out, and there's some people saying things like, well, good, I'm glad they've got robots. I don't want to lose another member of my family. And I feel sorry for members of family. And maybe in the short term, you could use robots out there to save soldiers' lives. But if you start thinking a little bit longer, longer term, there's going to be robots fighting your lads out there. There's going to be robots in our city centres killing our lads out there. And as you say, they're going to come back into the civilian population. At the moment, what I'm seeing is good stories. You know, it's like some SWAT team. I'm getting stories here about the United States where there's, you know, some hostages. There's, there's two little kids and a nanny stuck with this gunman in the room. So the SWAT team can't get them to come out. They send in a robot, not armed or anything. 